I don't normally make videos about things that I like and why I like them. There's a part of me that worries that I don't really have anything new or interesting to bring to the table, that the world doesn't need one more cis white guy talking about video games on the internet. But I recently played a game that is very special, a game that made me fall back in love with gaming in a way that I haven't felt in a long time. And I also recognize I'm the type of person where if I had seen this game in passing or heard some indie game journals praising it, I probably would have rolled my eyes and thought, this game isn't for me. So I'm hoping that I can speak to people who are like me and convince them that this game totally deserves their attention. The title of this game is The Void Reigns Upon Her Heart, and it's a side-scrolling shoot-'em-up game, a shmup. If hearing that is making you consider closing this video, I want to assure you that I'm in exactly the same boat. Shmups are a genre I'm not normally into, but if you'll give me a chance, I'm going to explain why it not only works for me, but kind of made me fall in love with the genre I always found frustrating and impenetrable. I'm someone who grew up being super into video games, but had fallen out of love with playing them as time passed. My wake-up call was years ago when my gaming PC died, and I just never replaced it, because I realized that despite spending so much time reading about games and watching gaming stuff on YouTube, I almost never actually played new games anymore. On the occasions that I was gaming, it was usually something casual or familiar that I was doing to distract myself when I was tired, depressed, or to keep my hands busy while I watched television, rather than something I found to be a joy to do for its own sake. The Void Reigns Upon Her Heart, which I'm going to call Void Reigns from now on just for simplicity's sake, is so special to me because it takes a genre that I've never really gotten enjoyment from in the past and it makes me see why people love it. It gives me the drive to want to learn about and play and experience a whole new genre in a way that is normally totally anathema to how I play games. It's something I haven't felt in a long time and I'm recognizing that this is an incredibly precious and rare thing for a game to pull off. People play games for different reasons and find enjoyment from games in different ways. There's a bunch of writing out there trying to quantify this with different player personality types and motivations. I'm going to avoid dipping into that kind of clinical language, but if you want it, it's out there. My take is that shmups are a genre dominated by players that are driven by self-improvement, and the games in it are made with the expectation that this is how they will be played. They like playing the same level over and over, memorizing different bullet patterns, practicing concentrating on countless moving objects, learning all the different systems and strategies to maximum the number of points they can get, because to them, it feels good to get better at it. They get enjoyment from retrying a difficult level over and over until they can beat it, then beat it without dying, then chasing high scores and challenge runs. But I'm almost the polar opposite of that. I'm someone who is driven by having new content to consume, and I don't really find anything inherently compelling about getting high scores. They're just points, they don't have any meaning to me. Probably the closest I've ever got to being really into shmups was that I was a big fan of Star Fox 64 as a kid, and that was mostly because uh, I was just so enamored with all the cute little fuzzy characters and their world that I was willing to do what it took to see a cool new level or a boss or have a new voice character show up. When I played through Res for the PS2 and Panzer Dragoon Orta for the original Xbox, I beat them in one sitting on the lowest difficulty to experience the visuals and the music, and then I felt like I'd gotten everything I would get out of the game and set them aside. Other than that, I got owned by the first couple levels of Ikaruga, and I lost interest in indie shmups like Jamestown and Sai Mora after a couple levels, same with what little I've played of the Toho games. Void Reigns makes playing a shmup compelling to me because of its unlock system. There are tons of power-ups and upgrades and little bits of lore and music to unlock, and everything you do in the game gives you different currencies for unlocking them. Suddenly, I care about points, because now I'm not just trying to get a high score for the sake of having a high score. I want to earn more points because it means I get more game. It gives me motivation not only to keep playing, but to learn to play better, because it means I get more stuff and I get it faster. Also, it encourages me to shake up the way I play because there are multiple mechanisms for scoring points and they all have their own risks and rewards. You can keep a combo going by constantly hitting the boss with your attacks. You can use charge shots to blast off different body parts to earn bonus points. Use your smart bombs to soak up bullets or let bullets braze your ship without touching your hitbox. You never have just one way of approaching your situation at any time. And on the times that you do die or fall short of reaching a high score, you still earn some currency, so you never feel like you wasted your time or missed out. This is also helped a lot by the fact that this game is built around being played in bite-sized chunks. There aren't any traditional levels, it's all boss fights. 
A run through the story mode lets you play through a series of these boss fights with a breather between each one to check your stats and use any consumables you might have. Most bosses only take about a minute, and a complete run of the story mode at the easier difficulties only takes about 10 minutes or so. There's a very low investment of time, so there's very little frustration when you fail. But also when you're having fun and in the groove, it's just as easy to keep going for as long as you feel like it. As a point of comparison, I found the boss rush gameplay in Cuphead to be pretty frustrating and discouraging because each boss fight is several minutes long and you spend a lot of the game replaying the earlier stages of the boss over and over and over with no real change or progress just to get back to the part where you died. Same with other shmups. When they do have unlockables or some sort of progression system, it's usually built around clearing long levels or even the entire game a certain way, and it makes me rage quit when I mess up and all that time and effort just amounted to nothing. But with Void Reigns, I'm happy to just keep replaying an individual boss fight over and over in quick play because it's a minute. I can spare a minute. In the game's difficulty curve, it's just perfect. You start on the easiest difficulty and almost immediately unlock the option to play on higher difficulty options. So right from the get-go, you can find a place where you're in a sweet spot of not being bored, but also not being overwhelmed or frustrated. Every boss has a bunch of different varieties and forms that can appear in, which themselves all have a multitude of difficulty levels. And when you're working your way through the story mode, you are allowed to choose which boss you fight next from a random pool of options. So if you're two-thirds of the way through with full health and feeling cocky, you can opt to pick a higher level boss to try and get some more unlock points. Or if you're limping along one hit away from death, you might opt to choose a lower difficulty boss. But also, each of the options comes with different randomly selected rewards, so Maybe you choose a more difficult boss, because beating it will give you a healing item, so you'll be better prepared for the bosses after that one if you manage to stay alive. Eventually, you can even unlock the ability to give up the power-ups you've earned in one run so that you can pick them up in a future run, sacrificing power now for an advantage later. It's all very dynamic and fun and has a ton of variety and is all player-guided, so you're just continuously engaged in making judgments, managing resources, and balancing risk and reward. And because the difficulty ties into the unlock system, you're compelled to try these higher difficulties and take risks and try new approaches. The game trains you to be a better player and to like becoming a better player, while at the same time never feeling like you're being penalized or wasting your time because you prefer to stay in your comfort zone. It's really just one of the best examples I've ever seen for how randomization and other roguelike elements can keep a game fresh and exciting and compelling every time you pick it up. And I'm someone who usually has a very cynical attitude about games and other genres trying to use roguelike elements. Because a lot of the time it seems like the developers are doing it as a crutch to reuse assets and artificially inflate the length of the game by making you grind a bunch. Not here though, it's really well done and satisfying and central to the game as a whole. The game's art is weird because, on one hand, I could definitely recognize that it's the work of an amateur, albeit one doing their best within the limitations of their skill and experience. Character art avoids having to draw hands and feet, all the humanoid characters are artistically nude cherubs so there's no need to worry about drawing clothes, your ship is a cartoon heart and the enemies are simple geometric shapes, but it still has a very strong consistent vision and considering this entire game is made by one person, it lends the entire thing an outsider artist labor of love vibe that is way more compelling and charming to me than a lot of its peers. I think the closest comparison I can draw is that it reminds me of being a kid and getting to the secret final level in Kirby 64 and just being freaked out when you're suddenly fighting an angel that weeps blood in the middle of a hell vortex, but it's still in Kirby's soft simple graphics. All the monsters are freaky and alien and expressive and colorful, and also kind of cute, and I love them a lot. But most importantly for the game, they're easy to read to follow. The game's backgrounds are really beautiful pixel art with a lot of layers of parallax scrolling, but your ship and monsters and the bullets all stand out from it and are very clearly defined, so you never get lost or overwhelmed. Also, it's pretty easy to tell the different parts of the boss apart and which ones are intact or damaged, and you never have to take your eyes off the action and look down at the health bar to see if you're damaging them because they do a nice little flash when you're hitting them. There's other nice little touches like markers that let you keep track of where a boss is when they go off screen or placeholders that show where they'll be when they finish moving. It gives you all the information you need, even right down to your ship's hitbox. Also, I just need to mention that the music is really good.
probably the closest comparison I can think of is a cross between the music from the Toho games that the Japanese YouTubers love to do remixes of and kind of twinkly, refurby music from Undertale. It's strong, simple melodies that loop really well and you'll probably find yourself humming them at random times after you play the game. Again, like the art, it has a very strong personality and it just fits with the whole thing and really reinforces this game as a singular vision. I love it. I just wish there was more of it. Most surprisingly for me, though, is the story. I have clinical depression and anxiety, which probably isn't that shocking considering I'm a guy talking about video games on the internet. And while a lot of indie games as of late have done stories about characters that have depression or present metaphors for depression, there's something that usually doesn't connect with me and sometimes even kind of repellent. Now I just want to say up front that depression is not a monolith. Everyone experiences it in their own way and we all have our own unique symptoms and ways of living with it. That's totally valid. And similarly, not every narrative or piece of interactive art that tackles depression does so the same way and with the same goals. Nor should it. I'm just relaying my own experiences and preferences here. Please don't take it as a personal attack on you or the medium of gaming as a whole. Games like the infamous Depression Quest seem to approach depression with the goal of being informative and illustrative for people who don't have depression, representing the way that the symptoms manifest by limiting or altering the choices you can make and the way you interact with the world. I can appreciate these as interactive narrative experiences, but as actual games are by design just not very fun to play. There were also games like Celeste that approach depression as a metaphor, like climbing a mountain or fighting a monster. While this can lead to a fun game and a good story, they never really connect with me the way that it seemed to connect with other people because, in the end, the image of depression that it presents is one of a single conflict or obstacle that can be overcome. Uh, it's not easy, but you can climb that mountain or beat that monster and then it's gone and you've won. It's frustrating, especially when as time went on and it became more common, it would start to feel like making a game be about depression was, was just the newest flavor of the month. Like it was like a gimmick people were doing for attention. It was performative, it's sincere, fake. <clears throat> Void Reigns is special to me though because it's different. It's a game about depression and anxiety and suicide that sort of sidesteps those specific issues and is instead about the broader emotional and existential experiences of being a person who has to live with them. It's a game where flawed and damaged characters are going through a seemingly endless loop of struggling to disarm monsters with the power of love and find happiness in the dark and alien world that they live in. When they triumph, it feels good and they can enjoy their time in the sun with their new friends, but inevitably the darkness returns and they have to start all over again. When they fail, the titular void mocks them for even trying, pointing out their flaws and their failures, attacking their self-worth and asking them why they don't just give up, why they keep putting themselves back together day after day and struggling, knowing that inevitably, no matter what they do, the void will return. But they keep doing it, because as bleak and helpless as things can seem, each time they push the darkness back, they have a little more experience with it, they get better at it, they make new connections, learn new skills, and find new objects to help them fight off the darkness again. And in doing so, they inspire and motivate other people that are struggling. They even manage to make some monsters aware that they don't have to be monsters anymore and can start on their own paths to escape and they may never even realize it. Void Reigns is a game about living with these struggles and finding meaning and refusing to give up in the face of a world that is unchanging and uncaring and maybe even getting worse. And it's incredibly touching. And by virtue of being a roguelike, the gameplay is itself a perfect reflection of that. You're not going to finally climb that mountain and then roll credits, this is something that doesn't end, but you will keep going at it because you find enjoyment and meaning in doing so. One last thing about the story I wanted to bring up was the fact that this is a game that is a part of the relatively new push where games try and rebrand traditional gameplay in a way that removes violent conflict. In Void Reigns, you aren't shooting bullets at monsters, you're shooting love at them. They don't have health bars that you drain until they die, they have fear bars that you empty until they become your friend. You don't have smart bombs, you have panic attacks. You don't unlock and equip new weapons that shoot different kinds of bullets. You unlock and equip gifts, and the memories and vibes they give you change how your love manifests. It's a shoot em up without shooting, a love em up. I personally am pretty agnostic to this movement. I don't have anything against it, but at the same time, I don't find it to be something that is in itself inherently additive or superior or more virtuous. A game like Splatoon, making a first-person shooter where you're shooting paint instead of bullets is great, because it's a fundamental part of the gameplay that lets you do new things with the genre. But most of the time, you get things like Ooblets taking the physical battles of Pokemon and replacing them with dance battles where nobody gets hurt. It's novel, but ultimately just changing some words on the battle screen. In terms of gameplay, Void Reigns is definitely more like the latter, but I feel like it put in the work and earned it. Ultimately, the game is stronger for it, and it just fundamentally wouldn't be the same story and experience if it were different.
You know how at the beginning of the video I talked about how I wasn't good enough or interesting enough to make things and I shouldn't even bother? Or how a few minutes ago I got really cynical and distrustful of the motivations behind the people who made some of the other games that didn't connect with me? Well, that was me letting my depression talk. That part of me is my own version of the void. It's something I didn't even realize was a problem until I was in my early 20s and have since spent over a decade learning to live with. And I left those parts in there intentionally to try and show how easy it can be to slip into those kind of thoughts. How it's something you always have to be vigilant about, and how great it was to have a game that could speak to me in that way I really connected with. After playing Void Reigns, I even found myself sometimes picturing my negative intrusive thoughts as being in the same jagged red text and crackly sounds as the Void text in the game, and it made it that much easier to push them away when I decided to make this review. I'm someone who has spent years watching YouTube video essays about games and always wanted to make my own, but every time I tried I would ultimately lose confidence and throw my work away long before I finished. Until now. Void Reigns is a game that inspired me to want to make something and actually helped me succeed at making it. And if that isn't an endorsement, then I don't know what is. Alright, and one last thing. I know it's the hackiest thing in the world to compare games to Dark Souls and Undertale, but those are also games that deal with similar emotional beats, and they're games that have been very successful and built incredibly detailed fan bases. And while Void Reign seems to have largely flown under the radar so far, the people who have played it seem to be similarly devoted. I only even heard of this game because a guy I talked to online on Discord was similarly really enthusiastic about it, and he says he learned about it from some praise on a random post on some forum. This game is the definition of a diamond in the rough, and if you're somebody who complains about how there are too many good games that get overlooked by games journalists or get buried in the avalanche of crap that Steam allows on its store, then congratulations. It's time for you to be the change you want to see in the world. Give Void Reigns Upon Our Heart a try. And hey, it even has a free demo. And similarly, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please share it with people. That's how I find all the YouTube videos I like to watch, and it's worked really well for me. I've discovered a lot of amazing people online who do work, and the idea that I could be that for some people is, quite frankly, incredibly exciting. It's really intimidating to put yourself out like this for the first time, especially speaking this openly and candidly about mental illness and things like that, and, and I enjoyed it. I would like to do this for more things, because I'm somebody who thinks a lot about games, and if people enjoy my thoughts, I'd love to keep sharing them with them. And if you didn't like it, just please don't be mean about it to me. I'm very sensitive. Thank you. And if you check the video's description, I put a link to the game's website and where you can buy it there, as well as some other information I think you might find useful. I think that's about it for now. I'm going to stop.